you smell what the rock is cooking. What's up, people? This is the Nature Girl 30 here, and yes, my TV set is on in the background because my new additions to my house will not fall asleep without it. But anyway, this is a raw review for February 19th. I have to say that I was really impressed with this raw. This is definitely the road to WrestleMania, and they have treated it so well. It wasn't all about the beginning. It wasn't all about the end. It was all about the entire freaking show. Even the end, live in Lafayette, Louisiana, where they brought out LSU's Marching Lafayette Band. And definitely it brought back some really wonderful memories of being a band geek in college. But there were so many monumental moments tonight. Seriously. So many monumental moments from the beginning to the middle and to the end. Three, okay, maybe two and a half monumental moments. Let's start with the beginning, shall we? John Cena's promo was good. John Cena always comes out and has an excellent promo when he, when, when he comes out there. He always introduces the show. He always talks about things that's going on in the show. He always talks about WrestleMania. That's a given. But it was about the challenge, what really makes it exceptional. Because it puts thoughts in your head of what's going to really happen at WrestleMania. For example, we all thought the IWC was up in arms, especially myself in general, finding out that we were going to have John Cena versus The Rock 2. But it's a possibility that that may not happen. Because let's face it, what, what John Cena did at that at, at, at the, in the opener is the fact that he put up his seat to get the WrestleMania title with him versus The Rock at WrestleMania up for grabs for next week against CM Punk. The, if the thing is, if CM Punk wins, then he takes his spot at WrestleMania and he goes against The Rock. But let's face it, it may not be that way. People keep thinking, oh, John Cena's going to win. But let's face it, it's going to be a triple threat. John Cena versus CM Punk versus The Rock for the WWE Championship title. I am claiming that. I believe that that is what's going to happen. It's not going to be the same old, same old. Because the one thing is, I really feel like this show has really kind of been listening to the IWC's complaints. Because they have literally called them out every single night. Especially CM Punk. When he pretty much called out the fact that, you know, this is something that's been there, done there, watch, rinse, and repeat. Which is what everybody in the IWC has been saying. And it is true. It is something we have seen before. But we have not seen... Okay, we haven't seen a triple threat at WrestleMania for a long time. There has been some, and I can't be wrong. I know everyone's going to say, oh, it has happened, and it has. <clears throat> but not in a while have we seen a triple threat for the World Heavy for the WWE title at WrestleMania in a while. And it would be nice to actually see three juggernauts, in my opinion, three juggernauts of the company, The Rock, John Cena, and CM Punk, go head-to-head-to-head to head to head at WrestleMania, that's something I would love and pay to see. Now, I have to say that the, in, the, the, the inside, the whole feeling of the entire show was not that bad. The matches were really pretty good. And the thing that surprised me the most is what I consider to be the match of the night was The Shield versus Chris Jericho, Ryback, and Sheamus. The one thing that really got me is that I really feel like they're trying to play off this whole Aces and Aces angle. Besides the whole anonymity thing, which is something they don't have, and they don't have to have it, the one thing I could actually saw is the fact that nobody really paid any attention to Sheamus. At all. Sheamus was not attacked that often. Sheamus barely got a lot of a lot of hits in, and he was the only one that was left standing after Ryback was, was brutally attacked. And it's funny how Ryback was the golden boy, but Ryback was attacked more than Sheamus and Chris Jericho. And who was left standing? Sheamus. I really do believe that Ash is going to try to pull off this whole somewhat quasi aces and aces angle to see who else is involved with the shield. Because even though the shield don't have anonymity like the aces and aces are supposed to have, we don't really know who the members are going to be or who's going to secretly join them. So who knows? Sheamus may go heal. He might go heal again. Who knows? But the match itself was great. And it was really nice to see it. Even though this was a pay-per-view worthy match and it should have stayed at the pay-per-view, it was really great to see it on free TV. So I have absolutely no qualms about that. 
one match that has really impressed me was the mixed tag match with uh, Brodus Clay, Tensai, and Naomi versus uh, Epico, Primo, and that other chick that I can't remember her name at this point. Rosa Mendez, that's it. I have not seen a Hurricane Rana done on a dude since Lita. Naomi pulled off an excellent Hurricane Rana on, on Epico out of the freaking blue, and it was awesome. I haven't seen a Hurricane Rana done on a dude since Lita, and it was executed perfectly. That girl can fight, seriously. And if they literally try to do a lot better with their new Divas, then I really think there's going to be hope for the Divas division. She, I mean, I'm hoping that she was trained by Lita or somebody, or one of the veterans that actually showed her that move. They really need to start doing a lot more with the Divas. She literally has a lot of potential, and they should not let that go. Not with, not with anyone else to put out there, not all these model Divas that they have in the background. But seriously, they should work on the Divas because that match was excellent. I don't care what anybody else says. I like that mixed tag match. That's one of my main events in the night. But I have to say that some of the matches were fairly quick. Especially Kane versus uh, Randy Orton. It's a given that Randy Orton was going to win. Especially that Team Hell No is going to probably break up soon. And it's a given that they're starting to, you know, lose their, uh, I guess, lose their their glue, I guess, so to speak. They're, they're not really communicating all as well. It's, it's kind of a foreshadowing moment to showing that they're going to break apart soon and they're going to drop the belts. But honestly... Yeah, but I have to say that Jack Swagger, his Jack Swagger's match with uh, with Daniel Bryan was indeed a very good match. The matches themselves in the middle was a really good match. They were all good matches. I had zero moments of passing out, except for like some of, like some of the fillers that really didn't make any sense to me. The one thing that made me pass out, and I hate to admit it, I did fall asleep for maybe two seconds, was. Jack Swagger's propaganda on YouTube against immigration. Okay, this is the one thing that really does kind of bite at me a little bit and kind of gets on my nerves. It's okay. It's, oh, racism is never okay. Okay, racism is never okay. Or prejudice is never okay. But in this case, when they're trying to actually build up something, it would make sense if it had a purpose. Alberto Del Rio had a mess previously. And can we say that we did not see him at all during this whole thing? And this entire propaganda tirade is about Alberto Del Rio and it's about his Mexican heritage. Let's face it. It's about him being Mexican. So where the heck is Alberto Del Rio throughout this entire thing? It's racism without a purpose. It was stupid. The whole thing with, with uh, the whole thing with Jack Swagger, the whole thing with, with Colt, whatever his last name is, it was stupid. Because it would make sense, for example, the Iron Sheik versus uh, Sergeant Slaughter. In the 80s, it was all about the Gulf War. And around that time, Iraq was against, Iraq and the U.S. were at odds. We were at war. It makes sense for those guys to have a feud with probably a little bit of maybe prejudice and a little bit of racism in there. Not that I'm agreeing with the whole racism and prejudice as a whole, but it would make sense in the storyline for them to be at odds against each other, and actually have a little bit of banter back and forth. It made sense, especially that the Iron Sheik was involved in it, and then you got the Charge of Slaughter involved in it. They were involved in each other's promos. Where was Alberto Del Rio? The entire time, all he did was this stupid racist tirade, which makes me wonder if he's, if, if, if Colt is actually racist in general, but either or, it made no sense. It had no purpose. And they need to stop doing it unless they're going to have Alberto Del Rio involved and not at the last minute. This is the road to WrestleMania. You got one month to do it right. You got one month to make the World Heavyweight Championship bout at WrestleMania worth something. So they need to build it up from here. But what did they do? Nothing. Alberto Del Rio didn't even come out. So they really don't even need to have it at all. They need to stop it where it is. But anyway, let's move on to the second monumental moment of the night. And it was a somewhat minor half monumental moment of the night. And it was about, well, let's face it, Vicky Guerrero has something to say again to Paul Heyman. And Paul Heyman could care less. He could freaking care less. And then you have, oh gosh, you, you got that random guy that was supposed to be from the Shield. My brain has kind of blanked out for a second because I really don't care much about him. 
But then the fact is that he's actually an assistant now. Yeah. He's an assistant after calling out the shield. After being a... After being a snitch. <laughs> he ended up being rewarded for being a snitch. And he's an assistant to Vicky Guerrero. Or whatever. Not that I really care. But the one thing that kind of shocks me... Not really shocks me is like, okay... You're going to have Vince McMahon come out there and fight against Paul Heyman after having hip surgery? You think there's going to be a draw? No, dude. We're going to see. A, it looks like two old men fighting. That's pretty much what it is. Two old men fighting. And it's not anything that we really care about. So, no, it's not really a monumental moment. That's why I say it's a half. But then there's another thing that I, I kind of forgot to reiterate about the Shield versus the other guys. And I, you know who they are. But Chris Jericho kind of mentioned in the backstage segment that, okay, these guys are putting us on edge. We have to do whatever we can to take them out. And he compared him to the NWO. He compared him to the Nexus. Okay, I have to say that, yes, they kind of out trump the Nexus. Maybe not the NWO, but they out trump the Nexus. And they're saying that put them, on, and put them out on edge and we have to take them down. Okay, you guys are the only people that care. Like, seriously, nobody else is put on edge. Nobody else is freaking out over the shield. The only people that are freaking out over the shield is the Breakfast Club and Chris Jericho. They're the only ones that care because they're the only ones that are being attacked. It's the Breakfast Club and Chris Jericho. Nobody else cares. The only thing that I can say that TNA has done right is that when they actually did the Aces and Ace angle correctly, they had the entire company at odds. Seriously, they had the entire company paranoid about the Aces and Eights. That's one thing I can say that they did right. But when it comes to the Shield, the Shield is only attacking only attacking Breakfast Club members. So that's pretty much the biggest gap issue problem that they're having right now. So I really can't say, oh, I love this company. We're fighting for our company. You're only fighting for the Breakfast Club members and yourself. That's pretty much it. But I have to say for the entire match that they were all cheering for Jericho and didn't really give a crap about Ryback or Sheamus. But there you go. Just like the whole theory of having a, 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 of having a, a band with only one chick, they're going to focus on the chick and nobody else. Same thing with Jericho. When you bring back a vet, they're going to focus on the vet and the vet, is going, the vet is going to eclipse everybody else. So that's pretty much how it's going to happen there. But honestly... I'm going to go to the main event of the night because this is something that I did not expect. I did not expect this at all. The Rock came out in a celebration. Not only did he come out, he came out with LSU's Marching Lafayette Band. Bring that baggy days. Woo! But anyway, besides that, it was extremely awesome that before... A month, before, it was like maybe about a two weeks, okay, a month and two weeks before WrestleMania, you changed the belt. I'm telling you, the IWC has been begging for this to happen for a long time, and it happened. They changed the belt, baby, and I have to say this, it don't look bad. <laughs> it actually does look like a championship belt. It doesn't look like a toy. Even though I love the spinner belt because I think the spinner belt is cool, kind of has a whole little hood feel, and that's the reason why John Cena did it because his character back in the day was all about being hood. But now that John Cena is a Breakfast Club member, the hood angle kind of disappeared, kind of faded out. So now that it's actually more prestigious now, and it actually does look like it's the same size as the World Heavyweight title, which makes me kind of sad because it is really now eclipsing the World Heavyweight title. But it looks like a championship belt. And it looks like a belt for the guys to respect and the guys to hold up and, and believe in. So I have to say that The Rock did a good job in, re, in, in, in literally redesigning the belt. I have to say that it looks really good. But the one thing I'm going to say about that is, the, is the, the one thing I was really confused about is, like, okay, The Rock came out with John Cena's toy title. And then you got CM Punk coming out with a belt. I don't know, did I miss something here? I thought The Rock still had his belt last night. I don't know. So where did he come up with the belt that, I don't know. But either or, the one way that I can actually sum up this show overall is I can say that this show was a cookie sandwich. It had a great, it had a great outside, a great top, 
an even creamier middle that was really satisfying to the palate. And then you got like the, the cookies, you got the chocolate, you got the M&Ms, you got the double chocolate chocolate on the bottom. That is how I could say it was a cookie sandwich, but with like the better part on the bottom, the good part on the top, and the creamy goodness that's good for the palate. So I have to say that I really did enjoy this raw. I have to say that this raw was absolutely better than I have ever expected, especially after the Elimination Chamber. It makes you hopeful for the, the road to WrestleMania. It makes you want to stay tuned for the road to WrestleMania because I really do think they're taking it seriously now because that is going to be one of their biggest pay-per-views of the year so they know they cannot screw this up. And not to mention... And before I even close this out, they actually did announce where WrestleMania 30 is going to be for next year. It's going to be in New Orleans. It's going to actually be in Louisiana. So, honestly, we know now where WrestleMania 30 is going to be. It's going to be in Louisiana for next year. And that's something that we're all going to look forward to because we all know that The Undertaker's last match is going to possibly be at WrestleMania 30. And can you imagine... For the whole New Orleans crowd, can you imagine seeing the retirement of The Undertaker at Louisiana, at the Superdome? For real, you know, that's like extremely awesome. But anyway, guys, I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Leave your comments in the comment section below, whether or not it's about Raw, whether or not it's about the new location of WrestleMania 30, whether or not it's about Cena, uh, Cena stipulation, or whether or not it's about The Rock changing of the belt. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Send me a video response. I am all ears because I am crunk after what I saw on Rock tonight. I mean, on, on Raw tonight about what The Rock did. Raw was rocked. I have to say it was. But I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Leave your comments in the comment section below and send me a video response. This is an H Girl 30 signing off. Peace out. Later. Hit this smell. What The Rock is cooking.